Good afternoon, Christian Life Calling Fellowship. Seek here. Had you on my mind and thought maybe uh, maybe we'd chat for a second about Good Friday. And I understand I, I had a friend, a wonderful, wonderful, very special person wrote me earlier today and celebrated, said they were celebrating the events from 2,000 years ago and how excited and glad and thankful they were and of course we all are and uh hey brad god bless you brother um <laughs> but i tell you uh my my feelings have, have changed a lot about good friday through the years uh, the more i think about uh, jesus uh, the mockery of the trial and um the heinous way that the Son of God in whom there was no guile of totally virtuous and honest man and God. Hey, Kathy, bless you, sister. It, it, it breaks my heart. It tears me in half. It rips me up because, you see, we can read about Peter, you know, turning and, and leaving Christ um, when he was taken and and, and and he was captured and going before the authorities and, and you say, oh man, you know that, that was something Peter just said that he would never turn, but he did but you know the message there is, we would too uh, all of the disciples departed, every one none stuck by him in that hour, all were afraid all uh, turned their back and, and went away and you know, and part of uh, we're going to be having communion Sunday morning, and, and Jesus was telling the ones that he knew were going to turn away from him and desert him. He said, "After I'm, I, I've died and I'm raised, go on to Jerusalem, and I'll meet you there." Jesus had already accepted that they were going to turn on him. Jesus had already acknowledged that these, my friends, my followers, who I asked to put me before all else, are are going to desert me in my moment of trial, in my moment of suffering, in the, 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 the hardest and most severe thing that anyone could ever go through and that I'm going through on their behalf, they're going to desert me. And you see, what that really represents is you and I. It was our failure. It was our sin. It was our selfishness, you know, that, that literally caused the Son of God to have to suffer that heinous death on Calvary's cross. It was for my sins and your sins that Jesus died. Paul called himself the chief of sinners. Paul never met me. <laughs> yeah, the fact that the Lord's amazing grace was so plentifully merciful and gracious and 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 full of love that that in spite of the horrid things I did in my in my life, he was still willing to go to Calvary's cross for me and for you. I mean, think about the thief on the cross right beside him, put there for just reward, things he'd done that he deserved to be punished for. And, and yet when he turned to the Savior and said, would you think of me when you enter your heavenly kingdom? And Jesus told him, he said, I tell you truthfully that today you'll be with me in paradise. You see, the thief on the cross realized that, hey Linda, that it was him that deserved to be there and not Jesus. That's what the thief on the, the cross knew, that he deserved to be there. There was reason for him to be there and, and to suffer penalty for the terrible things he'd done. And there was reason for, for me and perhaps you, I, for all of us to be on that cross, but not for Jesus. And yet He went there for us, for the things that we'd done for, the, the things that separated us from God. Uh, you've heard the song. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a debt He didn't know. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt 
that I could never pay. So as I think about the events of this Good Friday, yes, I'm joyous like everybody else was. If the Son of God didn't pay that terrible penalty, then I perished in my sins. <laughs> you know, if He didn't pay that awful price for me, then I had to pay the price. And He paid the price instead. He loved me that much and He loves you that much. So yeah, we got to be grateful. But there also ought to be a sense of travail. I'm praying that the Lord will help me be more like Him. So that the things that I do now will please Him. So that there'll be no turning aside and walking away. God, please help me in Your strength and Your power to be faithful to You this day and every day. All the way till the end. And you know, God through His Spirit can help us do that. So as you think about the events of this Good Friday, a little travail might fit. A little hurting that it was for your sins and my sins that we, like Paul, were chief of sinners and it was for our sins that he died. It's a little travail that we need there. Yeah, joy and happiness that he loved us so much that he did it for us. And the realization that we'll be with him forever that loved us so much because of what he did for us on the cross. He didn't stop there. He did go ahead after he'd raised and he met them <laughs> like he said he would. And that's the deal. Jesus told them before he did it, sat down with them in communion and said, I I'm getting ready to pay a price. You're going to have to eat my flesh. <laughs> Sit there at the table with them. You're going to have to drink my blood. If you don't, you have, you have none of me and I have none of you. He told them that before he did it. He came with that purpose in mind. He loved us that much. Well, so we have something wonderful to celebrate. And I certainly am. But you need to check your heart. Make sure you, before you take that communion wafer and drink that little bit of wine that you've checked your own heart and your own mind. And you've let the Lord make you right inside so that at the same time we know this day how much Jesus loved us we're letting him create in us a love for God bless you thinking about you praying for you seek out